Well, today on Nation, the Window Cleaners podcast, we're talking about Responsibid and also software in general. If you got it, if you don't got it, if you're curious, maybe, doesn't matter. Stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? I'm glad you had made it. If it's your first time watching or listening, what's up? Have a look around. I hope this video doesn't suck and it's better than a cat video, but there's a ton of episodes to watch. We have over three years of content, so go back, binge it all, and then let me know how much you're binging. I think right now I just had a guy text me yesterday that he's on uh, episode 80. He just started it at the beginning of the month, so that's pretty darn good, but watch the episodes. Uh, hopefully, you learn a bunch. If you are one of the nation, one of the cool kids, you watch every episode, you thumbs up the videos on YouTube, you comment, because y'all's comments on YouTube have been going down a little bit. Uh, and most importantly, you buy your supplies through me, shameless plug. Well, awesome. Thank you. Virtual high five. It is because of you that I get to afford my lavish lifestyle of, of uh, paneling behind me. So thank you very, very much. And if you want me to put your order in for you, it doesn't cost you any extra. My number is 862-312-2026. Shoot me a text. Be like, yo, Jersey, my cart is ready and we'll put the order in. And at the end of this episode, I'm going to give you a code for 5% off plus free shipping. So make sure to listen to that. Again, did I say the number? 862-312-2026. There you go. Uh, cool. So today we are talking to one of my most favorite people in all of the world, Mr. Curtis Kempton of Responsibid. What's up, man? Hey, how are you doing, Jersey? <laughs> I'm doing amazing, man. I'm doing amazing. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know Kurt, you've been like, you've been in the business. It feels like forever. I feel like you were, you were like the guy back when I was getting into it. You were like winning awards. And I remember somebody seeing you at, uh, I think it might've been Atlanta, like IWC. And they're like, there's that guy. He wins every year. Like, was it the brand competition or something? I just remember seeing you like all dressed up and fancy and like, oh, he's on another level. But I remember. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Dressed up and fancy. I don't think I was at that conference. Well, dressed up compared to anybody else that was there. You had your nice button up <laughs> shirt on and everybody else just was like, what, you know, stained uh, shirts and things. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, that was a, that was a good time. I had a window cleaning and pressure washing company in Phoenix, and um, we won the most professional image award for three years straight at the IWCA. It was that was a really fun thing. That was when I was really focused on the brand and really pivoted my company. It made a big difference. Yeah, you know that was like the heyday of awesomeness. Like you probably nothing has ever been you know up to those standards of winning that competition. I I know. It's all downhill from here, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I do remember that, man. You went all out for it, but yeah. So now if anybody doesn't know you, you had that window cleaning company for a while. You ended up selling it, getting more into software. Um, I know right now kind of your main focus of what people may know you from is responsive, but are you working on anything else kind of in that uh, umbrella? <laughs> in that umbrella? Uh, well, I have four kids and they're all needing to be homeschooled at this time while my wife finishes up nursing school. So I feel like I'm also a school teacher and uh, software. Yeah. Since, since getting the window cleaning company sold, I've just been both feet into the software world and response a bit has just been everyday passions. All I do. I love it. I do. I really love it. Um, but I, I guess this is the year that helped me realize how much I enjoyed being amongst the people. Um, and now that all these conferences are not happening it's like oh man you know that stinks so yeah. i'm very much looking forward to that part again nice well uh now you can put uh, educator under your name tag of things that you're <laughs> that's you're right. awesome at well, well I, I, awesome I, I could bring some kids in here that could tell you how not awesome i am at it but <laughs> nonetheless it's got to happen we are definitely pivoting this year in 2020 that's for for darn sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, one big thing that I know you've always kind of been into, and this is even before you kind of started this company, you've always been into the software side of things and you've always been, I don't want to say techie cause that sometimes gets like a bad name, but you've always been on the tech side of things. I mean, would you say it's correct? 
Yeah, I think when I found out that systems was the only hope I had in my business, I, I think that I realized at that time that the best way to run a system that I could figure was if software or technology was running it. Yeah. And so my business, my window cleaning and pressure washing business, I was one of the, one of the first users of Infusionsoft. And it was so confusing and heavy duty at the time. I remember feeling I had to get a PhD in that software. And I remember even in those days, it was like 400 bucks a month. And like, that's a lot of money to spend on, on basically automated follow-up is essentially what it came down to. But I just felt it was so important because systems are more than just like making things uniform, which there's definitely something to be said for things being uniform, but it's really about consistency, not looking like a flake, looking like you're on your, on your, on the ball, not letting things drop through the cracks. And it's about the persona. It's about, I make a promise and I keep it. And so for me, like I figured that technology is the way to do it. And of course, also at the time, amazon.com and eBay, I remember back in those days, like I didn't know who they were one day. And then like, I didn't know how we were living without them. Yeah. And I think that when I saw where the ball was going or is, is uh, who's the famous Wayne Gretzky is a, you know, I go where the puck is going, not where it's been. And yeah. I, I just felt like that was a really important thing to me is to go, what, what does all this mean? Where are things going? And you know, things evolve from there. Yeah. You know, it's crazy is that I do remember even back in those days, not to date myself, but like, I remember like clothes and stuff. People be like, Oh, I got this online. And I'm like, why would you buy clothes on? Like you, you can't even see it. How do you know? It's like a pain in the butt to ship it back. Like there's so many things. And now all of a sudden it's like, I don't know how many days go by in a row when I don't have an Amazon package and, and you know, it's, it's something I staples, I'll buy staples through Amazon. Cause I don't want to drive to the store. You know, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. And, and, and those days it was, it was novel and weird to order stuff online, but I could see the normalcy of it happening. Mm. And I could just see that like, it was just transforming so quickly. And I felt like my competition wanted to wanted things to remain the same but i was so new and so young and my business was just like i i mean when i really started getting into systems i was the only employee so if i was going to stand out from the guys who wanted to stay the same all i had was for it to be different yeah. and luckily i did chase that and i mean i'm grateful every day for that but you know then <laughs> things are way different now than they were even then but yeah, it's, I wouldn't consider myself super duper techie from the standpoint, of like I could never write the code of the current stuff we're putting out of Responsibid. Like that's so yeah. far outside of what I was able to self-teach myself. But, um, but at the same time, like I get how they marry, how, how like physical world and software, like it's important to understand how they marry. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. We talked about this a little bit kind of before the show, but there's still guys, and I say probably, gosh, maybe once a quarter now. It's a little bit less, but maybe once every couple months, somebody's talking to me, and we're talking about things, and they're like, "Oh yeah, well, I still, you know, I still do paper invoices, and I do everything kind of in a card catalog, and you know, eventually I got to put it on a computer." And it amazes me that there's some people who still just haven't gotten into technology, like they're scared of technology. But there's two categories of those people, in my opinion. Um, and, and I hate to make something too binary, but people who are sort of really stuck in the, in the past, I think they fall into two camps. I think, there's, I think there's the ones who are afraid. Like if I go forward, I might not be as good as I currently am because I know and understand this thing. And I feel for those people because I think that, I mean, I can empathize with that it's like my kids, like as soon as I figure out how to parent an 11 year old boy, then he's the 12 year old boy. And, yeah. it, and it's, it's terrifying because <sighs> I, got it. I, I thought I was just getting the hang just of it. Just figured it out. Yeah. yeah. And I, I can understand how that would go. The other group of people, I think it's a, uh, it's a different thing. It's like, like, what is, how does the saying go? People who say it can't be done shouldn't get in the way of those who are doing it. Yeah. Like there's a lot of people who, and it's probably also based in fear, but like 
the people who know best that a water-fed pole could never work are the people who've never used one. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, the people who are trying it are finding out that, oh gosh, if you spray pure water on clean glass, n- nothing stays behind, yeah. you know? And, yeah. and, you know, you can get into that whole conversation forever, but I guess what I'm trying to say is, is that the people who are most sure that you could never quote from your website and give an accurate price and allow a customer to schedule themselves, but put themselves in the calendar for the right amount of time and scheduled against the job that would allow for the best possible drive time. For someone who's never done it before, yeah, that's impossible. It can't be done. Yeah. But I feel like those who dare to push and are willing to take in, into account the constraints, that's I think the beauty of, of technology. And now with things like machine learning and artificial intelligence, like we really can dare to dream a lot more about what's possible, but it will always be for people who haven't ever done it before. There'll be that temptation to say, this can't be done. And yeah. therefore I'm not going to try it. And that's how I'll know it can't be done, yeah, which is of course silly. Meanwhile, there's a thousand people that have it and run it and love it and couldn't imagine not having it and all that. Fun stuff. Yeah. A bookstore that sells books online could never sell as much stuff as Walmart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Jeff Bezos, hold my milkshake here. Hold yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> let me, uh, let me uh, show you. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Well, uh, one of the things that I think is, is a novel idea. Now, everybody that watches this, I, I think possibly most people that watch this know that I haven't owned a business now for a little while. But I have to say that if I was to start another business, it could be done almost completely automated. Now, I had not done an in-person bid in probably four years before I sold it. The last four years, not once did I. I had responsive running and I did on phone or over the phone stuff. Now, there's a few things that the benefits are is that when somebody calls you, it's in their brain. It's why gum is in the checkout line, right? Like it's It has to be in your brain right then. That's when you get it. It's an impulse. They're calling you for that. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, is that if they call you and you answer and you give them a bid and go, Hey, okay. So that price is going to be 249. And how does Tuesday sound between nine and 10 in the morning? All -hmm. their option is, is like, Hey, this annoying thing I'm doing right now, I'm trying to book it and find it and blah, blah, blah. It's done. I could just say yes. And it's, I could say yes and make it all stop. (laughs) Exactly. So all of that kind of combined makes it so awesome. And I know I remember people still always say that too. They're like, Oh no, my customers are different. Uh, my customers need me to be there. <laughs> my market's person. different. Yeah. My market's different. Yeah. It's a whole thing. And I say, have you ever bought anything on Amazon? Have you ever bought anything from eBay? And they go, well, yeah. I said, well, who'd you buy it from? What was the guy's name that sold it to you? It was, it was, it was Amazon. It's like, exactly, exactly. People in this new culture. And if somebody says, Hey, you know what? My house is really, really big, which is always the thing, right? You, you can't bid it over the phone. My house is really, really big. It's super fancy. It's probably the nicest house you'll ever see. You're going to have to see it in person. I'm going to go see it in person because that's that person telling me they want me there. I'm listening to that, right? That's the signal. Like every, They're giving you the that's signal. It. Exactly. Everything else I'm going to do right over the phone and responsive it was one of those kind of things. And I told you before this. I didn't really want like a sales pitch for responsive bid, but I talk about responsive bid like every third episode of nation. I'm talking about responsive bid. It's literally one of my favorite software programs that I've ever used for my business. So let's kind of dive into that. So if people don't know what responsive bid is, you haven't been listening to me first off, but tell us kind of what it is just like a elevator pitch for what it does. Sure. Well, we say that it's the, it's the software tool that helps you close more jobs at higher prices with less effort. So responsive bid is, is not a CRM. It plugs into a CRM and it works for your sales portion. Basically every, and I say CRM for those people who are still working off of note cards or maybe don't know what the word CRM or the initials are. It's customer relationship management manager. It's your customer factor. It's your jobber. It's your service monster house call pro basically any software that does your scheduling, your invoicing, your work orders, it keeps your work and your operation all organized. There's a lot of really great softwares out there that do a great job of those things. And Responsive doesn't want to be those things. We want to connect to those things because there's a sales side of your business that's not really taken into account in basically any of those softwares. Now, yes, these softwares usually have estimating tools, but they're not sales tools. Um, So Responsive, it works with, there's three aspects to Responsive. 
quoting quickly, follow up flawlessly, and scheduling smartly. So just to start with quoting quickly, responsive, responsive, we believe that you need to be able to offer up to, not every single way necessarily, but up to three ways for your customers to get a quote. You can give quotes from your website, if you set up responsive bid to be able to allow that and to allow certain quotes to go through that, that can be quoted by the customer answering questions. So online, over the phone, or in person. So over the phone, it's all about asking questions, putting the answers into the software, and coming out with packages that, that make powerful quotes. Your, your sales reps out in the field, your technicians out in the field, anyone who is out doing a visit, you don't want to miss anything. You got to get it right. So we've systematized the way quoting is, and you can run it through three different channels in person, over the phone, or even on your website. And those quotes, we also believe need to be very compelling. Josh made a good point. When a customer says, you know, how much will it cost? You can, you can just tell them a price and then be quiet or, uh, and like Josh said, you could say it would be this much. How does Thursday sound? That is, in our estimation, that's the sales process, is giving them all the information they want and then allowing them to now make a decision the moment they feel capable of making a decision. Yeah. So our quotes give good, better, best pricing. So you say, this is how many windows or this is um, the size of the driveway or this is how many stories our house is or the roof wash or whatever it is. And then responsible will say, well, the basic package would be this much, the deluxe, and you would define what basic deluxe or premium packages are. But now, instead of asking a customer a yes or no question, does 250 sound good to you? It's, would you like this package, this package, or that package? The answer to that in any way, shape, or form is a good answer because you're selling against yourself. Yeah. So, the, so quoting quickly, responsive, it makes it quick to get to a proposal. It allows you to integrate video so you can sell the unique thing about your company. It allows your company to stand apart from others and not just sell the service, but your guarantees or all the things that are special about you. And then we believe that the follow-up process is where we go from the quote. So every time you're trying to sell, selling has almost as little to do with the prices as anything else. Because when people buy the price, only, like if I said, I will give you something for a million dollars, you would say, well, what is that something? The million dollars doesn't matter until you have context. So response with follow-up allows you to give lots of context. Hey, we're a really good outreaching company. If you got a quote from us or if we did a job for you, we are going to follow up with you in a really responsible way, not look like a flake, look like a professional person, the stuff I talked about earlier. But it allows you to also keep talking about what makes your company better than the other companies and what makes it so that if you went to other companies, you're not going to get X, Y, or Z. Yeah. And if you've taken the time as a business owner, it, the follow-up is where you showcase that we are a very communicative company. You'll never have to worry that you can't get a hold of us if you have a problem. We show up on time or you don't pay a dime or whatever it is that's special about your company that makes it impossible for them to shop other people. But follow-up makes it so that if you got all the, spent all the advertising money and all the marketing money to get people to come in, you don't want to lose any of those people. So you keep following up. Yeah. And then scheduling smartly is the last thing. And that is where we use whatever, like even if it's Google Calendar, but if it's like, say, Jobber, for example, and your schedule is in there, responsive, we believe that the scheduling process is part of the sales process, even though we don't have a calendar directly. Our software will look at the calendar of your CRM, and it'll look at who's trying to schedule, what kind of job, and it'll do all the things that you would do as a human while you're looking at the calendar, and it'll make suggestions to the customer and say, or to your, your staff and say, do you want to you schedule this job for this date at this time, this date at this time, or this date at this time? It'll be matched to the right crew. It'll allow for the right amount of time. It'll put the drive time in there. It'll make sure that you're not driving further than you would if you're, you know, put it in the wrong day. Yeah. And so with those three things all put together, Responsibid says, bolt us on to the front of your operation. And now your funnel is bringing as many people into your business as possible. And then your CRM helps it so that you can actually deliver the service as awesome as possible. Yeah, what's crazy about Responsive, I think, and it was always like this before, but you were really the one, or I should say Responsive, it was really the one to, to focus on the three bids, right? The, the uh, good, better, best option. And we talk about that all the time, bundling services, right? Everybody that's watching does more than one thing. You don't just clean exterior windows and that's all you ever do. 
I mean, if you do, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear it. But most of us do gutter cleaning. We do roof cleaning. We do pressure. All those things can be bundled into a package. So how I always had it worded was like the basic package was exterior window cleaning. Very simple. The main package was uh, inside and outside plus tracks, frame sills, whatever I got going on, right? It's a little bit better. It's not like more things I do, right? But the ticket price is higher. And then that best one is everything we do. You want the best, it's everything. Everything we do is all this. Having that right there, I know it sounds simple and people go, well, yeah, you know, but here's the thing. People always go, I got to get three quotes. Nah, sorry, I got to get three quotes. Well, guess what? We just gave them three quotes. We gave them all the information they can decide on. We gave them all of our services depending on if they used it or not. We also gave them all of the options so that when they do choose a package, they already under under the standing, understanding of what they're getting so they don't go, well, I thought you were going to clean my roof. Oh, no, actually, you picked the package that doesn't have roof cleaning on there. Yeah. Right. There's all those things that kind of come to just that one piece of the program that that piece right there, that's why the close rate is so high. That's why I assume that I'm a great salesperson, right? I feel like when I'm selling my window cleaning, I can tell everybody the information they need. I can listen and respond and not just babble, right? But when it comes to response a bit, I've had jobs close at three in the morning. I've had yeah. jobs close, you know, four or five by the time I wake up in the morning. Like, that kind of thing happens is because they're getting all of the information that they need and they're getting it in a way that I would present it myself. They're doing it themselves on their own time. It's in their own, you know, it's in their mind right now. Maybe they woke up at three in the morning. They can't sleep. They go, oh man, my mother-in-law is coming next week. I got to get those windows clean. Well, there's nobody else that's going to answer a phone at three in the morning, but they're going to be looking at the site. They're going to find it. They're going to get pricing. They're going to book everything. And it's all right there. It's just, it's one of those things, it, it's almost its own employee. And that's when we talk about software and kind of the implications of not having software or maybe you're growing, but yet you're not big enough to hire an office per, your office people aren't working at three in the morning. Yeah. They're just well, and, and it's important to point out, like I don't want anyone to be confused. Responsive does do website quoting. You don't have to. In fact, up to 30% of our customers at any given time do not have Responsive installed on their website. But we do find that, website quoting is going to become more and more important because here's the thing. When someone goes to your website, especially at three o'clock in the morning, they're not browsing the internet because they're ha watching cat videos and having fun just being leisurely. Yeah. There is something driving them. And if you understand what that something is, um, there might need, need to be some changes made to your website. Those things are probably more along the lines of stressors. The HOA is on my back. I got to get something taken care of or you, you brought the mother-in-law one as a, as a kind of common one. There's a party going to be this weekend. Um, and, and it could just be, gosh, my, my neighbors got their windows cleaned. You know, I, I need to do that, like just to, to fit into this neighborhood. At three o'clock in the morning when that happens, and, and it is a magical moment to wake up in the morning to discover that all of this stuff has happened. But when that happens, if you think about it from the customer's perspective, there's a, it's a process of three. It goes curiosity, research, decision. And it never goes in a different order. No one makes a decision, then gets curious. No one makes a decision, then does their research. It's very specific. I wonder what, blah, blah, blah. Or I wonder if, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So, so someone laying in bed at 3 a.m. has a spark. That's the pin. That's what pushes them out of bed. It's the curiosity. Yeah, I wonder how much it costs to get my windows clean. Or I wonder if my neighbors would accept me if better if they saw that I was having a cleaning crew at my house, you know, whatever it might be. Whatever that moment is, they now get out their phone because the cool thing now is if you have a question, you just ask Google and you have a PhD in it within like moments. So, so they get out their phone off the side of their bed and they, they do a search for window cleaning Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Well, your site comes up and then your site wheeze all over yourself. We've been in business 20 years. We love you. We are the best. We, 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 we. And, and after they finished wing all over themselves, the customer's going, but what about that curiosity question? I can't find it. So they go back. So they were at your website. They go back. Um, 
they they see a phone number there. Of course I could call, but it's three in the morning. Or even yeah. if it was like their lunch hour, I could call, but this is loud in here and no one wants to talk to a human anyway. But that's not true. Less and less people want to talk to humans, but that's a trend. But anyway, the point is, is that when they go back to Google and they find Home Advisor or Thumbtack, Home Advisor and Thumbtack give them a promise. We will get you a quote in an instant. And so the person who's just on your website goes to the home, t- home, home tech, <laughs> home advisor, thumb tech, whatever it is. And they go, here, you promised me a, a, a bit. So they start filling all their information in. And then thumb tech or home advisor sends you an email and says, <laughs> hey, look how cool we are. We found this person that wants a service done. We made him a promise that we can't keep. Will you please give us money so that we can give you the information that they were freely willing to give out in order to get the information that they really want? Yeah. So here we have this person who's been on your website. They left. They went to someone else's website. They held them hostage from you. You paid the money and you're like, wow, thank you, Thumbtack or Home Advisor. When, and now you get to compete with everybody else for that person. So that's sort of the reality is, is that the people who say, I don't want to give online quotes, just know that there's people who don't give online quotes like Home Tech. <laughs> home Tech. That's home a new advisor, one. It's a tech. new one. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> they, they don't give quotes either but they promise it yeah and so and so just that promise alone even though they're breaking the social contract they're making a huge living off of it and how much better would it have been if the first time they got to your site that curiosity in the research mode they were able to do their research on your website and while they were doing the research they were given three options well decision making mode if i get if i get a quote off your website and you give me one price that's an ultimatum yes or no but if I'm on your website and I'm doing my research and I see that there's three different prices and I can be done with my research and make a decision right now, well, any one of those three is you. That's cool. Yeah. But you win all three tack, they don't care who gets picked. Just just yeah. do your thing and pay us. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Now, by the way, if you guys are watching or listening, uh, down below on the YouTube video and probably on SoundCloud, I'll put a link in there if you guys can try responsibly to check it out. But um, there's one thing that you did that was really, really, uh, cool. And I, I haven't checked it in a while. Of course I haven't run run response, in a while, but are you still doing finding out what the average window ticket price is? Well, we have so many new industries now we've made the modules so like nonspecific that we actually can't determine that right at the uh, moment. Um, because we, I remember, it- yeah, I remember still quoting that from people like would ask like, what's the industry standard? And I remember looking it up at the time was like, I don't know, it was like 12 bucks a window in and out or something like that. And it was like such a cool dynamic yeah. when you think about that's like everybody across the country, you know? Well, one of the things that we found though, is that now, now with package pricing, the cost of a window for someone who just washes the exterior versus the cost of the window someone's washing in and out versus in and out plus tracks plus wax protectant, you know, like yeah. all sorts of stuff that people are doing now to make their packages higher. Um, what we found is that the price of windows is like, you almost have to qualify it again. But one of the things that I just sort of hit on right there is if you stop looking at it as a commodity, like how much does the window cost? It's more like, it's more like this. How far can I push the level of clean? Now, if you're competing on price and you're taking the Walmart strategy, then of course the goal is what's the bare minimum I can do to charge the highest possible price. And you'll find that you're constantly fighting over dollars with a bunch of other people. Yeah. But if you move into that realm of, you know, someone calls you and says, Hey, I'd like to get my windows cleaned. And that should probably cost somewhere in their, in their own mind. They make this number up. That's that sounds like about a 20 to $40 job maybe. And you're like, that's $800. <laughs> like you're yeah, like, yeah. you're not even on the right planet price. Kind right. Of. <laughs> What happens is if you can offer something that's really nice, the wax finish, you know, rain X finish, or um, actually there's a new product that it was not that new. I, it wasn't out when I had my company, but like five or four star or something that you put on the window to protect yeah. it. Um, like if you're willing to go to those lengths and you take that person who came in thinking their window cleaning should cost 40 bucks and the first price you quote them is 1200 they're not going to buy that package. Like, I don't think 
that's a it's not even in their thing. brain like you said they're not even on the same planet it's it's too much of a shock right but here's the thing they weren't going to buy it when you told them it was 120 either they weren't going to buy it when you said it was 250 they certainly weren't yeah. because they already had a fake number in their head so what you could do is provide your luxury service and now you can bring people back to the planet and not lose the next bid so i i quote to someone who's thinking it's 40 dollars, i quote 1200 well the answer is no but now when I look at the next one for 400 or 250 or whatever it might be, what you just did was you brought them back to reality and then they were like, oh, wow, I could buy services from a company that is able to provide that level of service. I'm not going to pay that. But all of a sudden they start thinking about what their actual budget might be and what the actual yeah. value you're providing would cost as opposed to them hanging up and go, what kind of highway robbery is this? And they call the next person. The next person tells them the same thing basically. And they're like, oh, okay, I'll book. Because you reset their brain and the other company got the job. Yeah, you know what's crazy is uh, we have a trailer, like a camping trailer, and it is in a permanent location. We're buying the metal awning. We're looking at these awnings, right? And in my brain, I did the same thing. I'm like, oh man. This metal awning, I don't know. I've seen them all over. You always see them at 1500 bucks. I don't know. It'll probably cost something. Wrong. And I started doing research and I found the first one was like, it was like $3,999 or something like that. It was pretty darn close to $4,000. i am like, oh, these guys are ridiculous in my own brain because I took their price and compared it to what I thought it was. I went to the next company. It was $4,120. I'm like, oh, well, that first one wasn't too bad. You know, and as I'm researching, I'm realizing they're right in the center. Everything was right there because now I did my research. I looked at a bunch of different companies and a bunch of different prices and realized that's where the price was. Now, all of a sudden, it doesn't validate where my brain was. It's the same thing in packages. If you see that first package for a thousand bucks, the next package is 250 and the next one is a hundred bucks and they thought it was going to cost $20. Well, they go, okay, well, obviously I'm not right because all of those packages are over here. That's where I should have been. But now I can look at all of these and see where I want to spend in that. It changes that mindset and it unvalidates where your brain thought you knew what it was. And it's, and it's, it's not unethical by any stretch. It's just, it's like, it's almost not fair that you have to be the whipping boy for everybody else. Like, and I don't know, you, you just took me through the process. You were curious about what it would cost to get an awning. And can you imagine, I'm curious what it would cost to get an awning. And then you go to a website to go research it. And they talk about how great awnings are and what kind of fabrics they use and what kind of stitching they use and all these things. And your curiosity question was, how much does an awning cost? Yeah. And they go all the distance and then they stop. And you just go back until you can get the thing you're trying to find. Now, it's all good information. And I'm not saying to not do it because price is only good if people have value associated with it. I already said, right. like, if I, if I was going to charge you a million dollars and give you a spaceship, you'd probably be like, let me see how I can find a million dollars right now. But if I say, I'll give you something for a million, again, without context, you're like, I don't know if that's a good deal or bad. So it, I'm not a proponent of just throwing your prices out there. But I am a proponent of allowing someone who's trying to go from curiosity to research to decision to giving them a, a path. Yeah. And that's the sales process. The coolest part about the sales process is, is that if someone starts with curiosity, you can be their guide. I mean, you can like form a relationship with them. In fact, that's the other cool thing. You can do it responsibly. And I'm sure there's other places you can do it too. Put videos in your proposals. Let someone go from that curious stage and then research let them form a bond with you. And you better believe that at three o'clock in the morning when they're getting a video and pricing from the owner of a company that they may never actually have out, the, the owner may not come do the work at their house, but they're standing there saying, I guarantee all of our work. I hire people who are drug tested, background checked. And we know we care so much about our clients in this particular area that we will all go to great lengths to make sure that you know, we solve all the problems that are specific to this area. And I know a lot of our customers choose us because of X, Y, Three o'clock in the morning, they got their earbuds in and they're listening and they're, you know, making their decision. When they call the office and there is that human interaction, they actually have formed a bond with yeah. you as the owner or whoever is in the video. And that's the other important thing is that when people are looking to, to form relationships, relationships can start. Like <laughs> I go to a conference 
And sometimes half the people at the conference who come up and say hi and give me a hug, which I don't know if hugs are still allowed anymore, but <laughs> half of those people I've never met before, but they saw a video of me or they used my product for a while. And it's like the start of our relationship. Yeah. And it's just, I think it's important to, to not forget that we're not trying to use mind tricks. We're trying to create connection. Right. And the sales press process is about, I care enough about you to give you everything you want. And I'm going to give you more value than dollars you're going to give me. And, I, and you're going to believe that. And I'm going to believe that when we're done with this whole thing, because I designed my process that way. And that's where I, I think I've had some negative experience with salespeople. And the more I automate the sales process, the more I realize you can bake it in as long as you're intentional and, and automation forces you to be intentional because you got to lay it all out. But if you're intentional about it, you don't have to be one of those slimy, crazy, crazy salespeople. In fact, Josh, I know that's what you do. You sell window cleaning equipment. And the fact is, is that someone's going to buy equipment from you. They're going to use it. And then they can call you right back and tell you you're a jerk face if you sold them the wrong thing. Mm. So there's nothing in it for you to be slimy or sleazy. And I think that's one thing that I, I've really enjoyed watching, you know, response bidders in general, but just sales uh, service people in general selling their service is that those who are intentional about their sales process aren't trying to make up a new way to scheme people out of their money every time. They're systematic about saying, I know what value I provide. I know what we're really good at. I know what our best customers look like. And I know that this is what they value. And I can produce it every single time because that's the promise that our company keeps, makes and keeps. Yeah. So there's just, there's so many elements to it, but the sales process is sort of that, that very first introduction to your company that is so key to having long-term relationships. You know, it's interesting if you just to drop in, everybody's listening, real estate agents, every real estate agent you'll ever deal with ever has a picture of their face on their sign. And the reason is, is because you'll connect with that person before you ever call them. That's, That's right. the reason. Just remember that. That's One thing right. I do like about response before uh, we wrap it up here is that it does, it gets rid of tire kickers because they can know like there's always people who think it's $20. They look and they go, oh, it is out of my, and they truly, genuinely, it's out of their field. Perfect. But they're not going to call me and tell me that I'm too expensive. It kind of gets rid of them, right? Uh, it's the other same thing where sometimes people think it's going to cost $1,000. We could do it for two fifty, dollars and they're kind of finding out that they were way too high. Maybe they can do more services than they thought. So tire kickers are kind of, alleviates a lot of the tire kicking problem. But the big thing too, is that when somebody does fill that out or the information's put in, you get all that information. So even if at 3 a.m. they did it half asleep, they looked at it and went, oh, that's a good price. And they went back to bed. I'm going to call them in the morning anyway and say, hey, uh, Kurt, it's Jersey calling from XYZ. I just saw you uh, were curious last night and getting some pricing. I wondered if you had any other questions. All of a sudden now we're re-engaging. They're like, oh my gosh, I watched your video. I know who you are. I know who this guy is. Hey, yeah, we were looking. I was just going to book it. I just didn't. And I'm telling you, you can, you can land it that way too. And that, that automation thing is, is, like I said, it's having another employee just to kind of do and help out things. So well, one thing, it's one, amazing. One thing I will just add to that is, is that a lot of us know that we provide better service than our competitors, especially if you're intentional about your business. We know that the guy who charged the cheaper price probably is going to have a worse experience. But for some reason, we're all too scared. I think it's fear. I, I mean, for me, I think it was to hit someone up two weeks after they decline your, your quote and say, you know, Hey Josh, I'm sure you made a great decision, but I did want to just check in. I know you went with another company. Did everything go good? And is there anything I can do to be of assistance? Now, we all know when I say that everybody went, oh, I should be doing that. Well, you knew you were supposed to do that. I didn't tell you anything new, but it's, there's this little bit of like humble pie of like, Oh, I, if I do that, what if someone says, yes, they were cheaper and they did a great job. <laughs> well, okay, great. I mean, sometimes even a blind squirrel gets us nut every once in a while. Right. Yeah. So if you automate, and I know this is a big thing that people come to me at the trade shows and say, Responsibility's decline status is the greatest thing ever. I pick up so many crumbs that I thought I'd lost off of the table. I produce like a whole nother truck's worth of work just based off of that email and maybe a couple others that follow up behind it. And, and guess what? If you send those out and you're super classy about it, those are your most loyal people because they would have been too embarrassed to call you. They just told you, oh, you're too expensive. I'm going to go with the cheaper guy. Now they're like, oh, geez, now I feel like an idiot. But check this out. 
this company underperformed and I couldn't even get them to come out and actually do the job maybe, or they did come out and do a job and they did terrible and I couldn't get them on the phone. Here's a company that I told no to and they're so accessible that they on their own volition reached out to me and followed up with me two weeks after the job. I just had a negative experience. This is the company that's sort of the antithesis to that. Yeah. It's, it's just absolutely amazing. And those are the types of things where if you're intentional and you do the thing, you, automation takes the whole fear out of it because you just set it up and then you just, it just happens. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, that, that, that whole um, follow-up thing is so important because we are in an industry and uh, here's where the, the negative emails and things, uh, go ahead and send them jersey at windowcleaner.com. Uh, but we're in an industry that uh, there's a lot of fly-by-nighters. There's a chuck in a truck. There's bucket bobs. There's all the other rhyming words, right? Yeah. And the thing with automation that you can put in follow-ups and just for, even a route call. Like if you go to a, do a route bid and you follow up in a week, just it blows people's minds to go, oh, this is, this is a real company. This is like these people's real company. They're not just trying to find a buck. Like you instantly kind of think there's just a guy. He's like going to clean the wind. Like legitimizes kind of your whole company. So I, I love the follow-up side of it. Absolutely. Cool. Well, and, and if you follow up with people, not only are you sending the message that you're a legitimate company, but you're also sending the message that you should give me grace if I make a mistake because you can see that I, you know, as human as I may be, and, and you'll probably have a mistake at some point. Look at what I'm doing. The pattern shows you that I'm not the kind of person you just go leave a bad review on because you'll never see me again. Yeah. You can see that I'm intentionally trying to do the right thing all the time, which of course we all are, but it doesn't feel that way to a customer who you came, you did something bad and then you left and then never talked to me again. <laughs> you know, well, you were busy. You went to your next job. You weren't trying to be a jerk. And that, that follow-up sends the message that, Hey, I, my goal wasn't to take your money and run. And of course, you know, we all don't want to send that message, but if you intentionally don't send that message, now all of a sudden before a bad review goes up or, or not even a bad review, like just not using you again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It so. saves face. I love it. Well, cool guys. Like I said, uh, I really appreciate you watching this episode. I love response, but you know, I talk about it all the time. Uh, again, we're going to have a link down below, try it out, check it out, but it's a responsy bid, R E S P O N S I B I D. Uh, if you are looking, search on the forums, Facebook groups. There's so many users out there. Don't even listen to me or don't do your demo. Don't do any of that stuff. Just go talk to other people or look at what people are saying. I stink and love the program, but either way, uh, I hope you guys got a ton of information. I really do thank you, Kurt, for taking some time out of your day, uh, being a certified teacher and all, um, to uh, <laughs> come talk to me. So I appreciate that. Okay, thanks. And just so everyone knows, you don't have to buy a response a bid. You can just come do a demo. We'll meet with you in 15 minutes. We can learn about your company. We can show you what sorts of things we do. We can learn about the CRM you're using. Feel free to ask us our questions in a live demo. We're, you know, our success is based off of your success. So we aren't going to be a great fit for every single company. Um, if, if you already have people manually doing all the right things and you have a software that somehow is doing it all, you know, keeping it all organized for you, you know, that's cool. But I think one nice thing about a demo is that you can learn a lot in 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and again, I thank you guys for watching the uh, code this week. If you want to put your order in is Curtis, you tell me that code and you will get 5% off with free shipping. Uh, go ahead, text it to me or call me with your order 862-312. 2026. Remember, you can just throw everything in your cart overnight, 3 a.m. maybe, and then just shoot me a text. Yo, Jersey, everything's ready, and I can put it in there. But do remember, if you're going to put an order in, you have to tell me what kind of name brand stuff, because people do that all the time. I think the last one I got was uh, name brand socks. So that's cool. Think of some new ones, uh, but let me know either way. And uh, yeah, check out Responsive. I'm telling you, it's awesome. Uh, like Kurt said, just do a demo. Just look at it. It's cool. But uh, either way, uh, go and automate what you can, uh, become a better and stronger company. And more importantly, until next week, go out there and be epic.